In today's episode, you're going to get to see a beautiful 1966 Mustang. Hello everybody, welcome to Classic Car Chit Chat. My name is Kevin. If this is the first time you're coming to my channel, then welcome. I really appreciate you being here today. If you've been to my channel before, then as always, welcome back. Thank you so much for the comments you leave for me, for the thumbs up for you subscribing to my channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when the next video is available. Today you're going to meet a gentleman, his name is Mike. He has a beautiful 1966 Mustang 289. This car has been fully restored. It's a beautiful paint. It's got a brand new engine, brand new transmission, brand new drivetrain. It's almost a brand new car in every aspect. So without further ado, let's hop in, let's go for a drive and let's check out this beautiful 1966 Mustang. Hang on a second, Mike, let me catch up with you. Okay. Go ahead. Wow. And honk the horn for me too. You know what, it's not working. <laughs> really? Honestly, There's a first. It will. Okay. As soon as we drive, I bet you it works. We'll do it later, no worries. Okay, come on out. Mike, I gotta say. She is an absolutely gorgeous machine. Thank you. Tell me what it is. It's a 1966 Mustang. All the, this car, is it as about original as you get? Like everything we see, is it straight from the factory? Or are there like things like these lamps, would they have been extra? They were, they were extra. Is that something you installed or? It was installed on the car when I bought it but I've added a number of different things. I've pretty much replaced almost everything on this car. Now, did you restore the car? Like the repainted and everything? The car has been repainted. Um, it has a new engine, transmission, drivetrain, um, as well as a, a number of different um, things on the outside. I've replaced the bumpers, the door handles, Again, wheels, tires, it, it doesn't look anything like when I bought it. So, so what made you buy the Mustang? Like what was it about a Mustang that kind of drew you in? I was always into cars as a young man. A friend of mine, his father had one of these and I always liked the car. <laughs> and I just decided when it was time to, to get a car that this was what I would get. And this is the original location, like Evanston, as in the U.S.? I don't know. I'm okay. assuming so, but I don't know. This, the wow. information with these is pretty much non-existent. Anything pre-1967, it's very hard to find information on the car. You know what's really cool that I've never seen before is the kind of the louvered effect on the, on the tailpipe there. That's these are standard. Option. That's standard equipment for the GT package on a, a Mustang. Wow. You know what else is always cool to me is the little elements like the little chrome rings around it. They didn't have to do that, but I'm so glad that they did. It's beautiful. What is the name of the color? Is this like the original Ford uh, red? Or? This is called Signal Flare Red, which is a 1966 color. It's certainly one of the most beautiful uh, Mustangs you've seen. I've seen, certainly. You know what always appeals to me is the the striping and things like that. Those little elements really make it pop too. Those elements were part of the, the GT package, so the, the emblem on the side isn't on a standard Mustang. The Mustang lettering and the stripe on the bottom, that's all part of the, the GT package that came with the car. Now, do some of the GTs also have the stripe along the center or part way through the center? Like I've seen... Or is that sort of an aftermarket? They were a dealer added option. That's okay. my understanding for that year of car. Very cool. She's absolutely gorgeous. 
And you're saying it was pretty bad condition when you originally got her and you did a lot of the restoration? The bones of it were good, but again, I've, re I've replaced over, I've had the car 11 and a half years. I've replaced pretty much everything in the car. Although I'll say, except for the interior, the interior remains as I bought it. Really? We'll take a look at that in a second because it looks pretty, pretty immaculate. I love these lights. That little yellowy look to it, it's spectacular. But they look as though they're an actual light designed for the Mustang, like the way it fits there. The, well, this was part of the GT package, so this did come. If you ordered a 1966 GT Mustang, right. it came with the fog lights, with the rear tail exhaust as you see it, okay. and the side markings. What the car didn't have was any um, emblems on the side where right. you see the chrome uh, near the back fenders. There was always a chrome emblem there. That's, that's deleted for a GT. Interesting. And then the original fog lamps would have had that yellow tinge as well? Yes. Awesome. I love that. So it's been a labor of love for you then, hasn't it, over the years? It's been fun. <laughs> a little expensive too, but we won't talk about that. That's the, uh, the whole passion of it. That's incredible. So you were mentioning to me, you kind of bought this as a gift for yourself when you reached a certain milestone in your life. So what was that about? Well, I retired and decided that I wanted something to occupy my time and keep me busy. And I was always into cars as a young man. So I decided this is what I would get. Good for you. And she's so, so pretty. Like you must get an awful lot of looks on this car. I get at least one thumbs up every time I take it out somewhere. And isn't that the whole joy of driving classic cars? Like honestly, especially when you see the faces of younger people, I find it such a cool experience. So, cause they, they haven't seen, like most of us kind of grown up with cars or you've seen it as you were, as we were younger. But a lot of the younger people today, it's like, whoa, what, is, what the heck is that? It's such a cool car. Yeah, I get that. I get that a lot. Well, she's absolutely gorgeous. Can we take a look at the engine? Yes. How long ago did you have it painted? Oh, my Lord. That's spotless. Like everything. Jesus, Mike. It's not what I expected. Well, I sourced out because the, the old engine was a six cylinder in this car when I first bought it. So I sourced out an original 1966 engine and transmission and out went the old and in went the new. Beautiful. But even everything inside, like everything's been redone, repainted, like, like everything was removed and kind of put back together? The car, was, the engine bay was very clean when I removed it, it, okay. was, it was very well maintained. It was a very clean car. Where did you find the car, here in Canada? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I'm assuming originally it may have come from the US, but uh, it's been in Canada when you bought it. Again, the history of it, I mean, I couldn't tell you. Mm. That's always the challenge, isn't it, when you, when you have a car? I mean, luckily for my MG, I have enough history on it that I know it's been a Canadian car all along, which is kind of cool to, to have. I love it. I love even the uh, the side mirrors there. There's something different, and I love these uh, <laughs> the windows, windows. The, the air conditioning, as they would say. That's gorgeous. What about little elements like this? The rails at the top, and that was again original, like or a good condition when you I've, got it. No, I replaced the drip rail moldings. Drip rail, okay. Yeah, I've replaced those. Um, a number of different things on the outside of the car I've replaced just from where and given the cost of getting some of the stuff plated versus aftermarket yeah it just made more sense to get some new aftermarket and in terms of like the the windows and stuff like that original? all original windows cool. are all original to the car so they're as old as the car is but very little pitting and things like that I mean it's in good condition it didn't seem as though the car may have been driven that much uh, back in the day. I don't know how much it was. Again, I don't know much about the car prior to my buying it. Um, I had information from the person I bought it from. But again, it's, as far as history, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't cool. tell you. Can we see the trunk? I like your license plate too, mind you. 
<laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. Are these the original books? No, no. That's just aftermarket material I've had. Okay. And this um, material, like this tautiny this kind plaid of thing? This yeah. material is, this is original to the car. This I had to buy. Okay. Aftermarket. And full size? Uh, full size tire. Yeah. Has a full size tire in here. Awesome. And of course you've got the, um, the ever popular, I'm going to have to move this out the way, with the duster. Everybody and their uncle has one of these, the best in Canadian tire sales. <laughs> oh, she's gorgeous. Can I see inside? Certainly. Let me go on the passenger side first. You sure, Mike, original interior? Look at this. Now, whether it's original from new, I don't know. It, it, it certainly is if you take the seats out and look at the, the underlay and everything. It's old. It, it's old. Is it original to the car? I, I couldn't say. But you didn't have to replace it. But I it, haven't right? had to do any interior work. And this console here, too, that was there? Like, it's... Console standard. And that's part of the GT model, you think? Just... Part of the 66 Mustang pack. If you ordered it with a console, it came a console without air conditioning. Okay. Now, does this have AC? Or? This does not have air conditioning. Have yeah. Standard steering, standard brakes, no air conditioning. And you've got the ever popular ashtray, which is uh, absolute necessity. Ashtrays for the back, of course, yes. <laughs> Let me have a look at the other side. You know what I always find cool is the the windows at the back. Just the fact that there's an option there to wind it around. Window. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And I lo and I love the fact that they've got the uh, the Mustang logos on the uh, on the seats too. Yeah, the pony interior was an option on the car that you could order. Yeah, it's such a clean look. So these extra tacks and things you've put on. I I added the tack, but this the actual radio, dash. Radio mic is original. No, that that was the first thing I replaced on the car, okay. and it's an out. It's a custom auto sound, specifically for '65, '66 Mustang. So it plays, um, you know, attaches to a, a phone, and you can oh, play like your, a Bluetooth. your music. But, but it's like a retro style, so it looks yeah, like it, it looks original, but it's I not. Do like that. It, it had a very very sad old, I think Radio Shack radio in it when I bought it. <laughs> I think the brand was realistic. Do you remember those? <laughs> Actually, the speakers were realistic. Realistic, in the back. right? Yeah. yeah, I remember. I love the steering wheel. Yeah, that's that the original so cool. steering wheel to the car. Wow, how pretty is that? And these little notches there, what would they be for? That's for is the that, horn. Oh, that is the horn. That's, that's oh, the wow. horn. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And of course, the dice, because. Uh, you can't go around. Well, they were a gift. I didn't buy those. They were a gift. <laughs> as, as were mine. So you have to have the dice in there. Oh, she's gorgeous, Mike. Can we take it for a drive? Sure. Let's go. I was concerned. I don't like really loud mufflers. Mm -hmm. So that was one of my, I guess, pet peeves when I got the car is that I wanted a nice sounding exhaust. Right. But it's, quiet, nice, but it's powerful too, right? <laughs> it's a nice V8 sound. It is nice. Yes, totally. What is that red light there? Seatbelt light. Oh. But the seatbelts were original to the car? Or this is an add-on? No, the seatbelts were original to the car. In 1966? They, they were an option. Okay. You, oh, you had to pay extra for the feature. <laughs> wow. I do love your radio, though, Mike. That is a smart move to make. I, I think I need to get an MG version of mine. I had to have half decent music to drive. Of that's part of the it's part of the deal when you're in one of these. You, you have do. to have the tunes going. You gotta have to have it. And ideally vintage tunes as well. So we're gonna go that way. So would this have been a three speed automatic? Yeah, it's a C4 three speed automatic. What's, uh, what's the furthest you go in the car? Like, do you go to many car meets and things like that? I did when I first got the car. When I first had the engine redone and put in, I drove this to Detroit and drove the Woodward Dream Cruise. Oh. 
And no problems with a long drive like that? No. Excellent. Not at all. She rides beautifully though. Very smooth. It's very, it's, it's smooth, it's solid. Um, you know, I wanted something that was reliable and safe. Yeah. And it's, it took a few years to work all the little bugs and kinks out of it, but I've pretty much got it exactly where I want to have it now. And I just enjoy driving it. Absolutely. And especially on days like this, right? It's just For perfect sure. weather. Oh, she's lovely. The fall weather is a little better because there's no air conditioning. Yeah, I, I hear you too. <laughs> and especially with vinyl seats, it kind of takes the fun out of it oh, sometimes. Absolutely. It's a little hot, but oh well, we won't complain. We know what's coming soon, right? We're That's in Canada right. after all. That's so. right. Oh, look at that thing. I still prefer this. <laughs> that was nice. So in terms of power features, power brakes, power steering? No, standard None of those. steering, standard brakes. Oh wow, okay. So you it, gotta plan ahead to apply the brakes. Right? It steers wide and stops long. It does <laughs> not handle like a modern car in any right way, on. shape or form. And that takes a little getting used to right initially because we're so used to the the brakes applying when you want them to apply but you know what honestly though mike i think it makes you a more defensive driver because you're always kind of looking 500 feet ahead to see okay what could potentially go wrong here and you're kind of planning to make sure you slow down in time and you don't get caught so and this car has uh disc brakes in the front drums in the rear so okay. it it has the extra package the that was part of the gt package right so it has a stopping power if you need it. It does, but it's still the nothing compared to cars today. Right. But it's a really smooth drive. I'm impressed. I did not think it would be this smooth. I thought it'd be a lot stiffer somehow, but no, she drives It's still, they, on a real long drive, it, it'll beat you up a little bit. Okay. Well, when I took it to Detroit, I mean, I, I was feeling it by the end of the five hours right it took on. to get there. Plus, you're a little bit older too, Mike, so maybe it's not just the car. Maybe if, we're, if we were like 20 years younger, it wouldn't be such a big deal. <laughs> so what was your first car you ever bought, Mike? Do you remember? My first car was a 1967 Chrysler. Oh, yes. That I bought for $100. No way. It's a Chrysler Newport Custom two-door. <laughs> with a 383 four barrel in Good it. Good lord, a hundred bucks. hundred bucks, passed everything but the gas station. No way. And that was a Canadian car? It turned right. It was a Canadian car. How cool is that? And what condition was it in? Actually, it was in great condition. So almost mint then for a hundred bucks? For a hundred bucks. I bought it off a relative. Oh, that helps. But cool. At least you know the history of the car. I did. Don't you I wish did. you kept it though? I couldn't wait to get rid of it. I bought a 68 Firebird after that. Oh, is that right? Okay. So what did you get after the Firebird? Uh, Corvette. Okay, we'll turn right here. Okay, so you've had quite the little, uh, little stable have. of cars over the years. I have, and then life got in the way. And of course, yeah. Did you go through the minivan phase and uh, have to sell everything? I had a few minivans. Yep, didn't we all? And you still get all the looks, right, Mike? <laughs> it's fun. I enjoy, I enjoy driving. Days like today are perfect. I, do, I agree. Not overly hot. It's just right. Plus, it's not so hot on the radiator as well. It just probably cools better than mine does, but I know I have a... It's a little temperamental. I don't think English cars are designed for the high temperatures, uh, like a 30 plus, like 20 somethings. It's, it's no problem. It's fun to drive. No, this is very, now again, I mean, it's all, everything in it is 10 years old. Yeah. The rad, the, the engine, the transmission, it's all, you know, it's all newer stuff. But as we're sitting here, you get the nice rumble of the engine. The engine has a little uh, mild cam in it, so it has a little bit of a rumble to yeah, it as well. It's a good sound. And headers, four barrel. So it's, it's still not a fast car compared to what's on the road today. True enough. But that's not about speed. It's about driving 
in style, it's in nostalgic. elegance. Yeah, absolutely. It's You're not there to race around. What's the point of that? No. You want to go as slow as possible so people can admire your car. Well, when I was young, I didn't care. No, that's true. But now that I'm paying for the repairs, <laughs> yeah. I seem to care a bit more. These and days. also the gas, right? So premium and lead, it is, uh, <laughs> it's not so cheap. So what can you do? So after the Corvette, what did you have? After the Corvette, I went, I was out of the... Out of the scene. Yeah, family comes out in the way. Out of the cars and, yeah, yeah, driving sedans and vans and yeah. things like that. And then got back to this. Awesome. And you've never looked back and it probably brings you so much joy that, that you did this thing. Is there a car that you wish that you could still get given the chance? My wish list? Oh, yeah. absolutely. What would, be, what would be the car? If I had the means, I would probably be driving a 32 Ford. 32, uh, like a Model A style Ford? Like hot, no, a 32 hot Ford Hot Rod. Oh, wow. What I would want to buy. Well, you, you'll see a few of those on my YouTube channel, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't believe so. Oh my lord, it's, it's like it's brand new almost. So to some extent, this car was babied, it seemed, uh, certainly the interior. Didn't... I think it sat for a long time. I think um, whatever was wrong with it mechanically, it, it sat as opposed to being a driver. Right. And then the person I bought it from sort of took it to a certain stage and then got rid of it. Yeah. And I took it and got it to this stage where I want to take it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the original color was also the same red. Always the same red. Right. We'll turn up there. So you kind of kept it as much the original, if you will, as possible in terms of the color. The interior has always been black, I'm assuming, with, uh, with this car, which yep. kind of suits it to a T. I wanted to keep the car as sort of not original because it it's obviously not an original car, right. but I wanted it to be as period correct as I could yeah. put it. Somewhat authentic, right? And, uh, authentic looking, but not, you know, not, not authentic parts, not new old stock parts or anything yeah. like that. There she worked, so she does work. <laughs> it's sort of a two-tone, you pay extra for that feature, Mike, so uh, <laughs> you shouldn't complain. My temperamental horn. That's okay. Very cool. She's just beautiful car. Oh, what is this, by the way? That's a console. Oh, so it's like a So that's glove where box. your little stuff goes. Very nice. And the glove box uh, doesn't lock glove or anything. Box pulls out. And this actually was a first year feature, the emergency flashers from... Oh, and they actually put it there. Yeah. How cool is that? Very nice. And it's actually a lighted glove box too. There's a light in there and there's a light in this one as well. Yeah. Very nice. The interior is actually beautiful. Very, very cool car, Mike. Thank you. And I've always got this thing about cars where the ignition or the key goes in the dash. I don't know, it's just something special. I wish mine had that, like I know some of the old MGs do. Mine's on the actual steering column, but I, I just think it's so cool to have the key dangling there. It's just a nice touch to it. Very nice. And again, the mirror, I see you've got the, the day, so it actually... So this turns. How about that? Day, night. <laughs> and again, all original from the car. All original from the car. And beautiful. She's absolutely lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, Mike, I want to thank you. I Such really appreciate the time that you spent with me and getting to know your car. She's absolutely beautiful. And oh, by the way, when did you get the license plate? The 66 hoops, like when you got the car? I got the license plate when I got the car. How cool um, is that? It was, I went through a, probably a hundred different variations of things. Right. Because the first question is, what year is your car? Yeah, because you see 66 Pony, you see so many different, or 66 Stang, for example, right? Yes. 
And so, so that's nice. what I came up with. And I love it. it's been on the car ever since. And it suits it to a T. Gorgeous car. And look at the paint. It just pops, doesn't it? It's, it's almost prettier than mine, but I'm not going to quite say that because if I did, I'm going to have to remove that from the camera. But Mike, again, thank you so much for, for today. I pleasure. really appreciate it.